Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining Adobe and Silicon Publishing today for our webinar on how Adobe created the Summit Playbook PDF with InDesign Server. We're excited to have you here. We're going to go ahead and let people stream in until about one minute after the top of the hour and we'll get going. Welcome those of you joining us today. We're happy to have you here for the webinar on how Adobe created the Summit Playbook PDF with InDesign Server. We're gonna give people just a minute or so till after the top of the hour and we'll get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Got a couple more coming in and we're going to get started here. Okay. I want to thank everybody for joining us today for our webinar being put on jointly by Adobe and Silicon Publishing. And we're going to share with you how Adobe created the Summit Playbook PDF with InDesign Server when they made the decision to move from an in-person event to fully virtual. With me today, I've got um, Max Dunn. He's CEO and co-founder of Silicon Publishing. He's focused on delivering automated publishing solutions that empower creatives. Our latest Advancement has been Silicon Designer, which is a simple online editing platform that enables anyone with any design background to create beautiful branded personalized content. We've also got Mike Zahorek from Adobe. He's the Senior Business Development Manager for InDesign and InDesign Server. And we have Brett Kisner, one of the world's leading experts in InDesign and digital asset management integration technologies. He's passionate about providing customer-centric enterprise solutions and most recently was the project manager for the Adobe Summit Playbook. 
Looks like we've got a few more people that have joined us. Welcome to today's webinar. We're excited to have you here. Um, the only housekeeping item I have for everybody is that if you um, have a question, go ahead and put it into the Q&A. We will try to keep this as interactive as possible and um, be pulling your questions um, live into the, into the stream of the presentation and, and demonstration. Max, do you wanna take it away? Uh, sure. So I'm just gonna review what we're gonna see today. Uh, we'll start with an introduction from Mike from Adobe. He'll be on throughout to uh, give the Adobe perspective on this on this stuff. Uh, then Brett will lead us in the specific, specifics of how we made the playbook happen uh, with Adobe. And we worked together to make this thing happen uh, pretty quickly and with great power and scale. Uh, and then uh, I'll take over and go into how generally we do database publishing work with InDesign Server and the range of solutions we cover with data-driven publishing and our platform that, that may or may not be of use to you. We'll also you know, provide uh, info, info about how you can do this yourself if you're, if you're an InDesign Server geek. Uh, and finally, turn it over to Q&A and let you ask any questions you might have about how this stuff works. Excellent. OK, before we get started, why don't we go ahead and launch a quick poll just to see where everybody is with InDesign Server. So the first question is, do you currently use InDesign or InDesign Server? And the second question is, are you currently doing any variable data or dynamic data publishing? A lot of responses. OK. So sharing the results with you all, can, if you can see that hopefully, that um, those that use InDesign, 70%, uh, 70-30 split. And then in terms of variable data and dynamic, it's about half and half. So some people have tried it, um, about 25% never have, and um, the rest of you are involved in it. So excellent. Great mix. OK, Mike. All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is Mike Sohorek. I'm the business development manager supporting InDesign family products uh, with a focus around InDesign server. Um, I've been around uh, Adobe since the launch of InDesign 21 years ago, and I was very involved with uh, the launch of InDesign server. My role has always been uh, focused around partners. I've had a number of different roles at Adobe, but they're uh, always uh, working with our uh, solution partners that can extend the products that we have. And InDesign Server is really made for partners. It's, it's more of a developer product and it's something that we created years ago, um, about 16 years ago, um, largely at the request of our partners that were trying to help build complete solutions um, and needed to automate certain processes. But that also comes back to the one of the uh, real hidden strengths of InDesign, which is its ability to script almost anything. So that started with InDesign desktop and our partners could see how they could use the same scripts and um, make them work as a server. So we created InDesign server. Um, which is, brings us to this Summit playbook that um, um, we're going to talk about today. So I've worked with Silicon Publishing a long time. They were one of the earliest partners uh, to work with InDesign Server. And um, when Adobe was planning our summit this year, it was due to take place at the end of March. And so we, we could tell uh, by um, late February that uh, a live conference was was just not viable due to uh, the, the COVID virus. And we needed to pivot very quickly into a virtual conference, which we did. One of the elements of the conference was to create a playbook. Um, so the Summit team was developing a digital assessment for our customers and wanted to deliver that in the form of a playbook where customer would answer questions uh, to see where they're at in terms of digital readiness. Um, but the, the team wanted to have an option to create a PDF version 
of the playbook that could be annotated and shared with colleagues or partners. Um, there, you know, th this is a playbook that could potentially be anywhere from, let's say, 50 to 100 pages. And um, we knew that uh, just converting HTML into PDF uh, really had some challenges. Um, and this was also something that needed to be personalized. Every single playbook was going to be different. So we needed to um, be able to create potentially hundreds of thousands of playbooks in a very, you know, in real time, essentially. Now, I'm going to fudge on that a little bit. Uh, real time could mean, you know, you finish the playbook and you get the PDF in within a minute or so. Um, and that was pretty a pretty high bar or challenge uh, to do in short order. Um, while there's other partners that I know could do this, we reached out to Silicon Publishing because we knew that this required a combination of custom configuration, but a sophisticated scripting engine working on InDesign Server could, that could automate the formatting of structured content. Um, I think what one thing that's interesting about the the uh, session today is just to think about the different types of content that can be automated um, if you have uh, a, a good scripting engine and and structured content. Um, in the end result, doesn't have to be printed; it could be in PDF. PDF has its place uh, in terms of something that's easy to store locally, to archive, uh, to, to put notes on uh, for your own, um, you know, your own personal um, education as well as sharing that with others. And uh, there's a lot of different types of content out there that InDesign is capable of formatting uh, with scripting. So, um, what you're going to see today is how Silicon Publishing accomplished all this in short order. Um, they succeeded in, in the, uh, the, the objectives that we had at the beginning of the project, and we were able to turn this around in a matter of weeks. So, it's really a great example of the art of the possible. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to, um, I think, Max again uh, to continue to talk about how this was done. All right, thanks, Mike. All right, it's Brett next. Sorry. Absolutely. No worries. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. And so, you know, Mike talked a, a, a little bit about what the the playbook was, but you know, really this was a tool set that was focused around six key areas of, uh, of the customer experience management journey. And throughout the, the application, it's, it's interactive. The user has self-assessments that allow them to identify what gaps they're interested in, um, what, um, uh, where they are on the scale of uh, strongly disagree to strongly agree to various questions that uh, really assesses their readiness uh, for for different uh, different actions, and the results of which, uh, when you think about all of these questions across the six different areas, is not as simple as a credit score. You don't you don't take away a number and say, this is where I am on my my CXM journey. It gives you lots of information to digest, things to think about, suggestions, and those resources provide a a tangible set of uh, information that is sticky and if the customer wants can serve as a guide and a reference for, for them and their team and their partners as they're looking to evolve uh, that, that journey. So the, the challenge, as, as Mike said, is we, we wanna generate a, a lead behind. When you think about pivoting from an in-person summit to the virtual summit, it lacks the physical interaction that Adobe conferences are known for to be able to share best practices and ideas. But the, the playbook uh, provides another mechanism to be able to provide things for uh, Adobe customers to think about. The challenge, of course, with, with digital experiences is that they are providing lots of information that is useful, um, not at just the time the user is interacting with the app, 
uh, but for days, weeks, and months to come. And as Mike said, PDFs are, are great for being able to archive and memorialize that kind of information and to be able to share it with the various stakeholders. Of course, this becomes more important as we're, we're working in a, a, a primarily virtual world today. Uh, teams are, are distributed. So the notes that the users can take in the app also become another way to uh, help with the communication. And I'm going to show a little bit of this uh, in, a, in a few minutes. But the challenge becomes, how do you take that digital experience and quickly build a highly designed document, in this case, an InDesign document, with content that is unpredictable? We knew going in that some of the suggestions, the answers to uh, various questions, those were all known as far as what the variations could be. But when you think about it, you could have a user that uh, answers uh, one question that results in a suggestion that's one paragraph and another question that results in three to four paragraphs of information. And then you've got all of the notes that the user can take as well. The document that's created needs to account for the fact that the user is going to make decisions that could need the, the page count, the PDF, to shrink in size and expand in size. And so you have to think about how do you handle the text growth? How do you uh, present uh, the results in a way that is easy to digest in a, a uh, physical document like a PDF versus a scrolling web page? Um, and how, lastly, when we think about the technology, how do you quickly build what amounted to a 115-page document on demand when the user finishes uh, their questionnaire. And as Mike said, uh, timing was of the essence. And in actuality, we went from final design of the, uh, the, the printed document to production in about seven days. So the solution for this was to take the, the user-specific content that they filled in through the app and to feed that into variable-ready InDesign templates. Those templates, which were uh, driven by Silicon Designer's pagination module, um, allowed us to quickly build, uh, in the case of production, 15,000 pages of PDF output a minute. That equates to about 150 personalized documents every minute. The solution is hosted on Microsoft Azure using Silicon Designer's pagination module and InDesign server in the back end rendering all of those documents ensuring that the look and feel is consistent and, uh, and, and clean the way you would expect of any Adobe, doc, uh, any Adobe product. The performance, as I mentioned, was tuned to be able to output uh, a single page in under one second, which amounted to being able to output an entire customer's document in about a minute. And those PDFs were then delivered through the browser into the Document Cloud View SDK, which is available on Adobe I.O. So let's take a look at what this is, and we'll start in the web browser with the CXM Playbook app. I've logged in with my Adobe ID, and when you log in, you are taken into the playbook, and as we mentioned, the playbook is broken down into various sections, the final section of which being your overall results. Now, I've already taken this, but you'll see as we go into one of these sections, we have information inside the app. Uh, this is our digital first section. Uh, it's uh, the first quote of the, the app is from Shantanu. Uh, and as we go through the app, we are asked various questions. In this case, they want to know um, what technology areas uh, of opportunity we see, and we're able to quickly flag off the ones that are important to us. When this comes into the print, you'll see that we take that information and we rearrange how we display this and things like that. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. There are various resources. These resources carry over into the print document as well, the PDF, so users can go and visit the digital trends report later. They can focus on uh, inputting their information now. And then, you get into the various foundational elements. As, an, as we click into those elements, we are given quotes and then uh, given a 
self-assessment that we can take where we can uh, look at a statement and then judge how we see our organization fitting within the scale of options. Options going from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And as we go through that, we go through our serious series of assessments and questions. What's building in the background of all of this is data. And that data results, I'm just gonna skip through our foundational elements here. That data results in scores to see where we are versus the benchmark of uh, companies that have, been, uh, that have taken this assessment. See where we are on the scale from being uh, low to high in the readiness. And then throughout that, you'll see we have suggestions based on each of the questions we've answered. And the suggestion lengths can vary uh, based on how you answer and based on the specific question. So all of that data aggregates from each section and then gets combined into a total score. That total score is then broken down into our sections. And finally, the user can view their PDF. When they click view the PDF, all of their data is sent to Silicon Designer. That data is then used to build a 115 page document, which is then returned to the user in the web app, right here using the document cloud view SDK. So you can see here, I've got my, in this case, 111 page document, and I can uh, move through it. I can annotate it as Mike said, and of course I can download it so I can share that with my team. So let's look at this from the InDesign perspective. We're gonna actually go back here and look at section two. And on the left here, I'll leave uh, the web app. And on the right, we have InDesign. So you can see that I have an InDesign document. This is an InDesign document simply for section two. So we've actually broken this down into InDesign documents for each of the sections, plus an InDesign book file that brings them all together and allows us to generate a single PDF for the, the document. This InDesign document, if you see here on the, on the right, um, has all of the same kind of information, but is considerate of how things work. Brett, getting up. Brett, your audio. Check your audio, Brett. Might need to come back in. Let's try this. Can you hear me? Sure can. Thank All you. right. I'm going to switch, switch over to the computer. So on the left, you can see here the, the answers in the web app. And on the right, you can see the, the, the print output. So when the data is sent over from uh, the CXM Playbook app, we take the information and we make the various check boxes and check off the ones that the user has checked off in the web app. And then we actually reorder that information so that all of the checked off elements are aggregated all the way up to the front of the app. As we continue down uh, and look inside some of these foundational elements, you'll see here we can answer them strongly agree to strongly disagree. And if we scroll down into those, you can see that we've highlighted the items. And here in the, the web app, um, you'll notice here we just have strongly disagree to strongly agree. Whereas in the print, they've actually given you additional information about what it means to strongly agree or be neutral on a specific topic. So the user input, they can see exactly how they've input. And then later on with that PDF, they might you know, scribble out some answers and, and choose a different one or go back into the web app and, and regenerate the PDF. 
So all that information is generated, but I'm gonna go back up here in the document and you'll see here there's a notes section as well. I didn't show that in the web app before, but you'll see in the web app in each of the sections, the user can click on this notes icon and can enter in a note that they wanna track about this section, different information that they might wanna share with their team, things like that. Now you'll see here this box is big and this box can accept up to a thousand words or more. Now, how do you account for that in print? Because we've got this, uh, this quote here from Accor Hotels just below it. Well, that's where the, the power of InDesign and the flexibility of Silicon Designer come into play is that we can build this InDesign document to be able to take additional input. So if we were to, as an example, and I'm just gonna do this manual here, increase the size of our quote, you'll see here that quote, uh, or increase the size of our note, that quote here will move down on the page, but at a certain point, it's gonna cut off. And so you'll see if I add additional lines here, it actually moved that quote over to the next page. So we can make sure that things don't break in a, in a way that isn't pleasing to the user. So all of that kind of information can be accounted for in the print so that they get a delightful experience. So the benefits are, are really uh, quite, uh, quite uh, immense, right? The, the, the CXM playbook was the highlight of Adobe's first virtual summit. And uh, there's a, a great video on the, um, the, the summit website uh, and even has Tom Brady talking about his playbook. Um, for virtual attendees, it provided a capability and experience for them to get the expertise and knowledge that is uh, invaluable of any Adobe conference, um, but was something that I know everyone was worried about going into the first digital summit. And it really helps fuel the plans for uh, improvement in customer experience management over the year to come. It becomes a conversation starter for teams uh, that despite them being geographically dispersed, working out of their homes, allows them to continue to execute and continue to improve their practice. And finally, um, I think it, it helps keep Adobe top of mind in the customer's CXM journey. So with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Max and Max can talk a little bit more about the technology behind how these documents get built. Max? Okay, can you see my desktop? Yes, we can. Um, yeah, so how does this work and how do we do this and how can you do this for other uh, use cases? Um, we are really building everything we do on, on the Adobe InDesign Server Foundation, which is a really incredible tool. And InDesign Server, if you're not familiar with it, is essentially the InDesign desktop application exposed as a programmable server. So it has no user interface. You have to control it with code. But with that caveat, you can do anything that InDesign can do at scale dynamically. And InDesign is extremely well exposed to automation. Um, so everything you can do with InDesign can be done with InDesign server, literally. And it, it is um, really cool that it handles all of the Adobe graphic formats so incredibly well. So you can render native Photoshop files, native Illustrator files. Um, now you can do SVG since CC 2020 supports SVG. Um, and it can do anything that InDesign can do as far as output. So it can render a JPEG for a preview on the web, a PNG or a JPEG at the right size, the right scale for the device that the user is using. Uh, it can also emit high quality PDF for high quality print or low quality PDF if you don't want to let people print. Um, so you have a lot of fine grain control over what, what it does in terms of output. And it's nicely automatable in the same way that the desktop is automatable. So the desktop is the ultimate uh, sort of debugging tool. You can render uh, and run everything we do with our Silicon Designer on the desktop or on the server. And um, you go back and forth to, to, to set up your experience and be ready um, for a scalable solution in the cloud. Um, so InDesign Server really came to exist because InDesign is great, it's wonderful, and it's wonderful to make documents one by one with a designer creating each one. 
but many organizations for, for years, for decades before this, were, were, were doing data-driven publishing where they, they need to flow out 4,000 records of data. They don't really want to hand massage each one. Sometimes they have to do 4 million records and 4 million unique documents, uh, and, and there's no way you could do that with just manual uh, work. So InDesign was built with automation in mind from the very get-go in 98 or so, and uh, they, they built it really well to support automation we got our server that we've been begging for for seven years in 2005 and we've been a leading reseller of that because we just love it i mean it really it lets you publish at scale lets you create dynamic documents on the web and it's all built in a way that's very harmonious with all of the other adobe applications you know especially indesign it's really literally indesign as a server and indesign itself interplays really well with all of the other technologies such as PDF, Photoshop, Illustrator. Um, so InDesign Server is our core tool that we're using and we're binding data to um, page objects to render output like the CXM playbook, but this can also work for many other types of documents. Um, and we see a, a very broad spectrum of use cases in, in our world. And it's, it's kind of funny when we talk to them, they, they, they really think they're so important that they're so different from each other. You know, a financial uh, organization does not want to see a cruise booklet as a demo for their, they need to see a financial document and a real estate organization wants to see a real estate document. And so we have to sort of tailor the, the, the message to each individual, but really what we're doing is, is extremely horizontal. It's generic in design, you know, bind the data to the, um, template and flow data according to the way a designer would do it. And that's what, that's what the beauty of InDesign is. Um, so we see, you know, a very broad, broad um, application for InDesign server. And it, it covers almost every industry. It covers almost any kind of document you might make. I mean, it's all the documents you might make that would be data driven, such as a, as a school report card or a marketing piece that's a postcard for you or some tech doc for a, a product. I mean, a very broad spectrum of documents is covered. And the data we see, you know, we're not, people ask us, well, what format should my data be in? And they expect, we have to tell them, you know, do this and this and this to make your data this way. The way we built it and the way we work with things and the way, you know, best practice of development against InDesign server works is you really don't really care that much how the data is uh, presented. You need some form of structured data and structured data comes into the system and renders through a template and renders out the, the final output that you want. Um, you know, a good example of database publishing is the, the kind of messaging that, the, that a, say a cable or, you know, some, some of these companies that are that provide cable services and cell phones and internet and TV, um, you know, they, they might want to, say uh, very different things to different members while they, while they send them their bill. They send the bill, but the bill is also now a message about, you know, what do you want to buy next? If you've got, if you've got the cell service, you probably want to buy the cable. They want to upsell the cable service. If they've got the cable service, they want to sell the phones. And so um, we can run InDesign server to be very flexible and very powerful at flowing content according to business rules about how things shape and how things form even variable content. And that's what's really cool about this is we can make these content, these documents dynamic and unique. They're, they're not the same. You know, people, different recipients get very different stuff depending on who they are, what the data points are, are known about them and what the company wants to convey to them, both in terms of core information and some sort of sales or upsell to that core information. A good example of our, um, our work with pagining with, with designer is Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. They, in, the, in their heyday, you know, before the COVID virus, of course, <laughs> they used to do 10,000 cruise, cruises a day. They would sell 10,000 or so cruises each day, and, and that would generate 10,000 documents for the 10,000 people that, that are all personalized and tailored to those needs of those people. So they get the sections that they expect um, that based on what, what Royal knows about them, based on who they are, based on what they bought, and they get all of the information to um, uh, go on their cruise successfully, but they also have uh, information that would sell them something or upsell something or, or let them have an option to go somewhere or tangents off of this based on who they are and all of the data that's known about them. 
So like the CXM playbook, um, this is taking in very personal information about you know, who's going on the cruise, how many people are, there are, and then it provides them what they need to, to know to get on the cruise and have the information they need. Um, it also uh, you know, flows content through a, a, a beautiful series of spreads that are based on logic around how, you know, what did they buy? What can they upsell? When we flow it, we're looking at how much white space remains and what can we put in that white space. If they have extra white space, we'll fill it in with filler ads or filler content. If they, you know, have it um, very tight, we can compact it and make it fit on, on, you know, the right number of pages. We control the output for print in a way that it, it prints well and, and you get nice spreads of content. So pagination is really a fine art and InDesign Server really supports that extremely well. Um, you know, what we're, what we're really doing is we're, we're binding data to rendition intent. We're saying, um, given a template, it's going to ingest data and assets. You know, the data is typically in uh, some sort of relational database or, or MongoDB or something modern as far as data sources. Uh, we don't really care what the data source is, but it must be somewhat structured to know what's coming in. And the assets are often managed in a dam such as Adobe Experience Manager. And the, the designers really are, are the controllers of this process. The, the designer is king or queen in our world. They set up a template that's ready to ingest data and assets. And if they do that properly, they can spit out a lot of documents without manual intervention. Uh, it gets more complicated when you have rules. And, and in the case of the CXM playbook, we have a lot of rules. You know, we're, we're not just um, rendering one data flow through one template, but there are conditions and, and values that are that are input from the users that, that will determine a lot of different things about how how that gets rendered. And so in a very flexible system, we paginate with the designer using um, a rules a rules engine on top of a data generated mapping. And that mapping is really a function of taking InDesign InDesign objects and binding them to data. So if you take, for example, a financial statement, uh, you would check that into the dam and analyze it and break it apart. And, and this is where there's something more than InDesign Server going on here. This is something that we, we add a layer of uh, uh, functionality on top of InDesign Server to really facilitate binding the data to the objects in the, in the page. And we, you, we, we often exploit the InDesign snippet model which is extremely powerful. You know, you can use InDesign snippets in your desktop apps and a snippet is just an arbitrary set of content. Um, but it's, it's a very cool thing. If we, if we take a typical financial statement, for example, or even the CXM playbook, um, it's gonna break itself into little components. There are, there are objects that are gonna flow a certain way, like a table of data might flow um, or a chart might flow or a graph or, or a little snippet of information. And we look at how is that going to be rendered? What's the rendition intent of that? As well as what data source uh, would feed that? How we're going to get the data going into that object is our, is our key effort with, with designer. And so we, once we map this and we let you map this, we let the client Adobe or Royal or whoever um, create the mappings between the data and the rendition intent. But once it's done, it just flows out. It just, flows right through and you get the perfect document out by combining the data source with the rendition template. And that's, you, that's really how Paginator works. Max, um, can you but, also, um, we've got a question in the audience, uh, how if their workflow is primarily digital, how can this also be used? It, it doesn't matter. I mean, the, um, the output is, is really a, a choice. You know, it, the output can be um, completely digital or it can be completely, you know, print centric, but it, it's not that different really. It, it's surprisingly similar. People, people have this sort of concept that there's, there's print or there's digital and they're, they're two opposite things. But in both cases, there's rendition, there's typography, there's flowing, there's fitting, there are all of those details. Um, so it, it's really, um, we don't see it all that different the, the role of InDesign is kind of different. So InDesign doesn't always have a play in everything digital. Sometimes we're feeding just raw data to something that's rendering with HTML and CSS. Um, 
and sometimes we're using InDesign to, to render graphics. Or we, so we use InDesign Server as needed to support this, but in general, it's the same, same process that in, in either a digital or a print workflow, you're going to separate content from presentation. You're going to have some concept of a template and some concept of data that's, that's agnostic to how it's rendered. It's just sitting there as data that will render according to that template. So the template concept in, in a hybrid, you know, digital print world is really just um, sort of a superset of our of our print templates or our web templates. It's 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 something where you say, you know, we're rendering like this, and the data. The the, the key thing is the contract between the data and the and the rendition. Got it. So basically, same content, different channels, and it all flows beautifully. Um, the another question, which is very related, is um, would we want to put integrate into in copy into the workflow in either of those cases? You sure can, and, and in copy is a is an imperfect and changing product. I think it's it's evolving. I can speak to that, but um, the uh, you know in copy is a a very cool way to edit. Again, it separates content from presentation and lets people edit just the sort of text content um, with with a pretty intelligent interplay between the in copy text and the InDesign document. But it really lets authors focus more on the text content than the than the rendition and work sort of uh, collaboratively on one document. In our world, think, mostly we're we're doing in copy like stuff with web web interfaces to let people edit stories and edit the content itself. Um, but if it, you you're, know, InDesign but if you're using a platform to do both. Yeah, but if you're using InCopy in your workflow to generate content, that can feed in just like any other asset into the workflow as well. There's also um, the ability to kind of go back and forth um, in that you could have InDesign Server do a lot of automation, but still return documents back to InDesign um, you know, I, I've seen this in catalog workflows where um, a catalog is largely built in a very automated manner, but is then returned to a designer to do some tweaking, adjusting of certain areas. Um, and that can be extended to copywriters that may want to adjust certain things before the document's finalized. Yeah, that's a good point as well. We, we, when we edit this when we automate this sometimes we're spitting out literally 10 million documents without anyone looking at them they just render and they get printed and they get distributed or distributed it on the web or whatever other times we're creating one catalog that's going to be printed once a year in 300,000 copies and and they they want to look at that and the beauty of InDesign server is at every point we do have a raw InDesign file so we can do very elegant hybrid print automation workflows. It doesn't have to be bites out. If you're going to do this thing once and every page matters to you, you can, you can tailor every page using raw InDesign uh, and, and the hybrid automation. So you're, you're only editing the stuff you can, you need to edit. You're not doing the data merge yourself, but you're, you're still able to, to take it to any level with, with hand done automation. Very good. Do we have other questions you wanted to cover? I think we had some really great questions in our last session you were going to share, Max. Uh, we'll get on to those. I have some more uh, to, to say. Uh, just um, first of all, how, how is InDesign Server automated? Um, ExtendScript is an, a flavor of JavaScript, and we automate that. Um, for most of our work, when, when we, it's basically the rule is use ExtendScript if you can. If, if it's really necessary, use C++. So <laughs> there are two layers of coding on top of InDesign Server. One absolutely beautiful thing about it is that InDesign Desktop and Server both have the same automation functionality for the most part. So we debug really well with Desktop and we run all, all our stuff in Desktop and we get it working there before we have it running on Server. Um, and it's extremely scalable, although, you know, it, there's a fine art to scaling it at, at high levels, um, as we'll see. Um, and we, we do sell InDesign servers. So if someone's got a team of developers and they want to code this themselves, that's, that's not, it's certainly a, a great option. And we're very happy to support people that just want to run InDesign server 
and we're strong evangelists of, of the technology stack. And it's, it's a very beautiful, powerful technology. Um, we do deploy it at scale. And maybe Brett can talk to how we scale the playbook. But when you scale it, it gets a little subtle and, and hard if you want to go to extremes like 600 documents per second or stuff like that. Um, so Brett, what, what did we do with this implementation as far as scaling? Absolutely. So I, I, I mentioned this very quickly before, but what we, we we started with was the goal of being able to produce 150 uh, 100 plus page documents a, a minute and so that that requires us to be able to produce multiple documents in parallel so if you look at indesign server the the way that it's set up and the way that it's installed is that it runs on a server and then you can run multiple instances of indesign server Think of that as essentially independent InDesign applications, all running at the same time, able to produce uh, and, and do any of the functions that InDesign can do. So that uh, you, you, there's, there's typically an analysis as far as how many instances you can run uh, on each server. For the playbook, we landed at 64 InDesign sessions per uh, per uh, virtual server, and then we had four of those servers. So that put us at 156 parallel InDesign server sessions. And then our Silicon Designer app manages the distribution of jobs to those InDesign servers so that it can target sessions, uh, InDesign server instances that are underutilized or that are, are not currently processing jobs while others are processing jobs in parallel. And then ultimately, we can further optimize and break it down, as you saw within my example, by having multiple InDesign documents generated and then assembling them finally into an InDesign book, which we use to produce the PDF. Um, so yeah, and and we have our platform. So we may or not may may or may not want our platform, but it we it's an option. It, it's it's um, something where you put a lot of effort uh, for for decades to make InDesign scale, and we do things at at real scale at the biggest scale of InDesign server. There we are, uh, making ridiculous throughput happen. Um, and so the the Silicon Designer platform is. Uh, is currently really um, it's getting powerful because it's 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 um, benefiting from the economies of scale of doing this for for many organizations, and we have a really cool admin and fundamental load balancing and job queuing mechanism. So, if you use Silicon Designer, we have everything figured out as to how you hit InDesign Server, and a lot of monitoring and. Um, uh, job management and template management. Every, it, we have everything very well sort of under control if you, if you use our, our software. And we're not saying you should use it for everything, but, but Designer is, is a very powerful option if you want to scale something. And we can host it or you can host it. Um, and it's a very modular solution that can interplay with other applications. So we were able to do this Adobe thing very quickly because we had pre-existing technology that was ready to go as far as making how many documents happen and how many seconds or, or nanoseconds um, and um, being able to you know, flow this content with, with assurance that it will come out the right way at the end uh, without any, um, any hitches. So with that, I think questions and answers. Is, is, Jill, do we have other questions or, or not? No, none have come in. Um, we've been getting some in the chat, um, but I think pulling up some of the questions from last time would be really interesting to this audience. Okay, yeah, so so one big question that happened last time is what version of JavaScript does InDesign Server support? And it's um, it's unfortunately a little bit old as of now. This will probably change over time. Maybe Mike can speak to that. Um, but the, um, the actual language you're coding InDesign Server in is ECMAScript version 5, which is a, a very standard old form of JavaScript. And it's got it's got extensions to apply to the Adobe objects, so you can use the InDesign object model within it. Sense script is sort of a superset of normal normal ECMAScript five, 
Um, that doesn't mean that your web app, I mean, in this case, the web app was using the latest, greatest JavaScript. Um, the web app can be whatever you want. It, when it hits the InDesign server, then what we code the InDesign server in is, is something old, but you know, it interplays really well with any, um, any web technology. And we can also automate InDesign from other, other means. It's a very extensible application in its foundations. So um, we have found, for instance, that COM is, is faster than SOAP. We can use SOAP, but it seems, seems to inter introduce latency. Uh, so we tend to directly control COM. We've, we've learned a lot about InDesign over the years as to how, how to control it. Um, but as far as the JavaScript flavor, it's, it's really learning sort of the fundamental old school JavaScript to, to edit and render InDesign documents. Another question was uh, table columns. Um, yes, we can do anything you can imagine with tables as far as merging cells, uh, having columns change and, and dynamically. And, and a very common use case with catalog publishing is for each SKU to have a different set of attributes. So we, we get literally entirely different tables if it's a capacitor versus a resistor in a parts catalog. Um, so it's very flexible and extremely powerful as far as tables go. Yeah, and, and we've actually um, seen some, some instances, Max. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking back to some recent implementations where um, the, the customer's design had them uh, desire to merge cells that uh, have the same content next to each other. And so that's the, the beauty of, of the way in which, which we do that is, is we're able to take, you know, customer specific rules and fold them into, uh, into how, how our tools operate. So in the case of, of the, the playbook, a good example of that was reordering the, uh, the functional areas uh, so that the ones that were checked off would, would appear first. Yeah, that's the fun of this for us, really, is the fine art of making uh, very nuanced uh, design decisions without any designer. It's just in, in entirely the logic of the code makes things happen and makes things uh, come out the right way. So if, if you can define a logic, InDesign Server can probably do it. And that's, that's extremely cool. Um, and, and a common question, I mean, in general with InDesign Server, People want to do lots of things. They want they they think well. Let me use this to store my data. Let me use this to parse my XML. Let me use this to and 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 the coding is extensible and goes for miles. So you might try that and it might work. But in general, you know, when you really when push comes to shove and you want to scale things and run a design server at scale, you want to be very efficient and 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 lean and, and think well. What does a design server really do? I mean, InDesign server is going to lay out pages very well if you tell it exactly what to do efficiently it's not the thing you want to use to parse your data or sort your database or filter data or go hit the database and get you can do those things but it's not a great idea because it's it's not it's not targeted for that that's not its best skill usually you want to send in design the minimal set of what it needs with a very direct instruction to do what you need to do and if you do that it can go very fast and render incredible throughput without any hitches um, so it's, it's, we've learned over the years um, to be very efficient and do with InDesign Server what it does best. Okay. Lots of ways to get a hold of you, Max. Especially sales at Silicon Publishing for any questions. Does anybody want to be brought in from the audience off mute so you can um, ask questions personally? Either raise your hand. Nope, okay. Any last thoughts, Mike, Brett? I would I, I would just offer you know as as we were going through the, the CXM playbook uh, project you know what struck me is that I think about all of these digital experiences and um, you know I think about you know pulling recipes online and you know various other things and started to say well is there an application for this in, in those various areas and I, I think there really is um, you know as Mike Mike touched upon. The, the value of a lot of these web experience 
experiences go on long after the, the user is, is done with them. And so from, uh, from InDesign Server, we can generate um, uh, graphics, we can generate uh, documents, and we can give the user information that they can carry on uh, and use long after they're, they're done. And so that to me is, is one of the beauties and uh, real benefits of, of this kind of technology. Awesome, Mike? Uh, no, I, I would just encourage you to contact us. Um, I know I didn't uh, put my own email address out there. I can put it in chat. Um, but I think if you've got um, the certain kind of documents where you think this may be applicable, uh, it's always helpful to talk to us live. Okay, and we're getting questions. Um, the recording of this will be made available to everybody, whether you attended or not, and should be available later today. It was wonderful to have you here. Yeah, if you want to get a hold of Mike at Adobe, it's um, Zahorik at Adobe.com. You've got us for Silicon Publishing. Thank you so much for coming today, Max. Amazing. I always learn more every time I hear from you on technology. Deeper every time. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon.